Summary of the Motorcycle Diaries by Ernesto Che Guevara Ernesto Guevara is a student at a medical school in Buenos Aires, Argentina, in January 1952. His friend and fellow medical student, Alberto Granado, offers that the two of them take a motorbike trip through South America together. Their goal is to see the San Pablo leper colony in Peru, which Alberto is interested in professionally. The men fix up Alberto's old motorbike, which they call La Poderosa, which means the powerful, as a joke. They then say goodbye to their families and leave Buenos Aires. After a few days of traveling, the men stop in Miramar, Argentina, to see Ernesto's girlfriend Chichina and her family. Ernesto finds it hard to leave the ease and joy of his relationship with Alberto, even though he and Alberto are going on an adventure. He stays for eight days and gives Chichina a dog named Comeback, which shows that he plans to come back to her, but never does. After leaving Chi China and her family, the men cross into Chile, but they have to stop almost every few days because La Poderosa has so many technical problems and accidents. When they stop in small towns, they meet people from all walks of life, from the workers who fix the bike to the doctors who care about them and give them food and a place to stay. They even tell local media that they are experts on leprosy, even though they are actually medical students. As a result, people in the area respect and help them, which makes their trip easier. In the north of Chile, they go to the US-run Chuquicamata copper mine, which brings in a lot of money for the country but not for its working class. Guevara notices that the job is dangerous and asks his guide how many people have died since the mine opened. This gives Ernesto a chance to see how unfairly miners are treated and how much damage capitalism industries run by foreign companies can do to local communities. Ernesto meets a couple of miners who are homeless because they were kicked out of the mines for being communists, which was against the law at the time. Ernesto feels a lot of sympathy for the couple, and he comes to think that communism is not a dangerous theory, but rather a normal response to oppression based on class and bad living conditions. La Poderosa breaks down for good in Peru. Because they now have to hitchhike or work to get between towns, the two men spend more time with the working class, especially indigenous farmers and workers. Ernesto notices that the Indians are treated badly because of their race, even by Europeans who don't have much more money. Ernesto is struck by the strength and resilience of pre-Columbian cultures in the face of centuries of oppression. He sees this in the traditional practices of native people. Ernesto goes to Cuzco and Lima, which are important sites of European power and culture but also have ruins from the time when the Incas lived there. Ernesto goes to see the ruins of buildings and castles, and he is deeply moved by how strong and well-built they were. By looking at the different layers of ancient, colonial, and modern building and infrastructure in these towns, he shows how Europeans tried to erase evidence of native culture to hide it. Ernesto finds it inspiring that indigenous cultural sites and practices have survived repeated attempts to destroy them. He sees this as proof that the indigenous people can and will rise up to take back the political and economic power that is truly theirs. Ernesto meets Hugo Pesci in Lima. Hugo is a doctor who runs the National Leprosy Program. Pesci helps Ernesto figure out how to explore the city, and he sends Ernesto and Alberto to the San Pablo leper colony, which is deep in the Amazon. Ernesto sees how bad the living conditions are at the colony, but he is moved by the doctor's work and the patient's positive attitudes. Even though he is learning to be a doctor and saw how leprosy was treated as a disease, he talks about the lepers in terms of their political oppression. This shows that his thoughts are moving away from medicine and toward political activism. After this, the young guys go to Colombia, which is to the north. In Bogota, they see what life is like under a very strict right-wing government. Ernesto says that the constant presence of cops in everyday life hurts people's pride, and he correctly predicts that this will help start a revolution. Ernesto and Alberto are finally going their different ways in Caracas, Venezuela. Even though the trip has changed and inspired both of them, it has done so in different ways. For example, Alberto starts to seriously think about becoming a leprologist, while Ernesto quits being a doctor and starts to believe in communism. After Alberto leaves, 
Ernesto goes through Venezuelan towns on his own. Here, he meets a mysterious European stranger who has left his own country because of his political acts, Ernesto doesn't say what these are, and is now traveling around South America, waiting for the chance to join another movement. The stranger tells Ernesto that when the revolution comes, it will be big and impersonal, and that many people will have to die so that a new proletarian society can be built. Ernesto is moved by this statement. At this point, he becomes fully committed not only to the communist way of thinking, but also to violent change. He says that people are split into two opposing halves, the oppressors and the enslaved. When it's time for these two sides to fight, he says, I'll be with the people. Ernesto imagines himself consumed with fury, fighting and killing for the people. In his last remarks, Ernesto raises the possibility of a future society that is more equality and justice, but he also warns that this new world can only be obtained through acts of violence and sacrifice. About the author Ernesto Che Guevara was born into a middle-class family in Argentina. He went on to become one of the most important revolutionaries of the 20th century. As a young student, he went on a trip around South America, which is described in this book. During that trip, he saw that most of the people there were poor and treated badly because of their class. After that, Ernesto went to Guatemala and worked on social change there, but his efforts were stopped by a US-backed coup that replaced a liberal president with a much more conservative one. Guevara became an extreme communist because of these things, and he spent the rest of his life fighting capitalism and empire. In the 1950s, he helped bring Fidel Castro to power by taking part in the Cuban Revolution. Later, he tried to start uprisings in the Congo and Bolivia that were the same. With help from the CIA, Bolivian military forces caught and killed Guevara in 1967. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.